What's up guys? It's been a minute and I've been super busy remodeling the garage a little bit. Circle around. So I repainted everything. Uh, I put a bunch of shelves up and did the lighting. Also put in an AC unit. But here's the current situation. So yesterday the Varus slash Hurtling solid joker wide body kit for the DC2 came in. Shout out to Varus Japan, it only took about five months. And of course, a big thank you to Bulletproof Automotive for all the support. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, you guys need to. This DC2 build is going to be crazy. Just like the FK8 was. So, let's just go through the stuff. So I was a little surprised to see paper instructions. Lately, Varus just sends you one sheet with a QR code. And once you open a QR code, you can access the installation instructions. And so this is like, the last time I got a paper instruction with them is probably a couple years ago. But this is a part for an older car, so yeah. Okay, let's start with the front spoiler. It's basically a new lip. I wasn't sure how it went on, if it was just a carbon going on top of the OEM lip, but now I will be selling the OEM lip. Everything's in Japanese, of course. Oh, one other thing. So, originally the lip comes in that 12K carbon weave, like the bigger squares. And I was a little nervous about that because the rest of the car is going to have like the regular 2x2 two two weave. I was happy to see that when it did arrive, it is the standard weave on the outside. And then they did the 12K carbon weave on the inside. So it'll match the rest of the carbon on the car a lot better. So here's a look at the lip. I just put a few pieces of hardware so it'd stay in place. I do need all titanium hardware. Hoping one of the titanium vendors will partner up with me on that because I do need a lot of them for this kit. The kit came with only the hardware for the front lip. None of the hardware for the wide body is included because you're basically on your own, whether you're gonna mold it, use a nut cert or whatever your method's gonna be, that's up to you. Next, let's check out the fenders. Let me just show you a little picture on how they cut it. And actually it doesn't look that bad. It's not cut as much as I thought it would be. You have to cut a ton for the FK8, but it's mainly because of the vents. You don't want the vents to show the fender on the inside, like you'll see the paint. So you cut all the way up to here. Anyhow, this is the front fender. It's got the cutout for side markers. I wasn't sure if it would. I thought about running no side marker. I thought it might look pretty sick, but you know, since I already got the cutout, I'll just run it anyways. Now I just gotta decide if I'm gonna run amber or clear. Let's see, next we'll do the side skirts. So, you know, it's your basic run of the mill side skirt install. Two pieces, one going along where the OEM side skirt is, and then this piece here on the rear quarter panel. And if you ever buy Vara stuff, you'll know that they do put their little certificate of authenticity on the inside. Okay, next we have the, the rear over fenders. And I'm surprised you don't cut that much for this either. Doesn't look too bad. Lastly, we've got the rear diffuser. Another concern I had was the Varus car had this cutout for the tow hook. And I really didn't want to run that because I didn't like how it looked visually. And so I was hoping that it didn't have the cutout and it doesn't. And it actually doesn't even have the cutout for the exhaust. You've got to do that yourself. And I opted for the extensions to make it wider. So yeah, all this hardware I'm gonna have to get. I was a little surprised because usually the diffusers come with hardware, but I didn't see any in the box, so 
But the coolest thing they sent me that I was so excited for is this flag right here. Oh man, look at this. This flag is usually only given to dealers. And you know, there's like websites where you can get these Nobori flags made, but I love just having authentic stuff. So it's got Vars, and then the Hurtling, Solid and Joker, and Magnum Opus. It'd be sick if I could do a Magnum Opus build one day. I would definitely go with the LC500 if I did. So here's the current situation with the DC2 Type R. It's on its way from Yokohama to the Panama Canal. Here, we can do the forecast. So it's gonna go through the canal and then up to Jacksonville. And the ETA for Jacksonville is June 27th. So one other thing on the DC2, I got a package the other day from Stacked Exports and it's actually the OEM shift knob along with my paperwork, like the export certificate, like the original copy. I printed out all the other documents. What I'm gonna do is carry all of this with me along with proof of insurance. Since I can't register the car yet because I need a T22B form in Georgia where a police officer verifies the VIN number matches the paperwork, I'm gonna have to wait to register it. I was hoping to register it and get temporary plates for the drive up, but I'll just drive up with all these documents and you know, I'm gonna drive safe, but if I do get pulled over, I'll have all the proof that I just picked up the car. And you do get some slack on registering a car if it comes to a new purchase, so. We should be good there. And the reason why Stacked sent me the OEM shift knob along with the paperwork is, it's pretty sad, but at the port in Jacksonville and also all other ports in the USA, stuff gets stolen, especially the shift knob because I looked online, I think this one's going for like a hundred bucks, 150. So it's terrible, but it's just what happens here. So they ship it with your paperwork. So about five or six days before the car arrives in USA, which would be around June 21st, my import broker can file all the paperwork to clear it for me to pick up. So keep an eye out. I'm gonna have part two of importing a JDM car video out probably around June 23rd or 4th. I'll break it down to where part two is the export and import paperwork. Part three will be me going down and picking the car up, driving it up. And then part four, we'll be registering the car and getting the title for it here. If you guys want to import a JDM car right now, but a little nervous, just go ahead and DM Stacked Exports or email them. They're going to guide you through the way entirely. It's a lot easier than you think. So thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe, turn on notifications. The DC2 build is going to be crazy. I think I've already got a buyer for the B18C5 and now I need to find a new motor for it. So yeah, thanks for watching guys.